Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. Today I'm going to rebuild this Magneto. It's a H4 International Magneto, so go ahead and follow along. Beside me is a model H4 Magneto. You can tell the model of your Magneto by reading the ID tag that's down here. There's a long number. It starts with H4 followed by a long series. This is different from a J4 Magneto, which would be on a Farmall Cub tractor. This is a H4, which is found on Farmall Letter Series tractors, like A, B, C, H, M, Supers. Every once in a while, you'll see them on newer tractors if they've been placed on those tractors instead of a distributor. It's important for you to identify whether you have a Magneto or you have a distributor. They're commonly confused because in some ways they do look similar. They both have a distributor cap like this when wires come out of them. However, a magneto has the coil inside and a distributor has the coil outside. Your tractor could have either an international magneto like this one, it can have an international distributor or it can have a Delco distributor. So when you are working on your system here, you need to first identify which one you have so that you get the right parts for your tractor. This is an H4 magneto and in this video I'm going to show you every step in the rebuild process. Now, I also want to talk to you about how to troubleshoot your magneto too because you can throw a lot of parts at this magneto and they're actually quite durable. They probably don't need as many parts as you originally think. The first problem that people have when they think that they need to work on their magneto is if they say, I don't have any spark on my tractor. And while that can be a problem with a magneto, either the coil or the points or some other piece, it can also be something external like the switch. The switch goes bad more often than you would think. So before we get to the magneto, I wanna show you how to diagnose and see if your switch is good or not. The magnetos have a simple switch on the dash that is in or out, it's ground or open. And that's all there is to it. A distributor has a different kind of switch and the magneto switch is commonly bad. So I'm gonna show you how to test it. You test it by taking out this wire right here. This is your ground wire for the magneto. With that removed, I have my meter set up here and I'm going to set one end here right on the terminal. I'm gonna hold it on there tight and then the other end right in here and you can hear that my meter went off. Then when I, my dad's flipping the switch, you can see that there's no sound and then there is sound. Do it again. There you go, okay? So when the switch is in, it's making a ground and when it's out, it's just open. I know that my switch is working correctly and my problem isn't within the switch, it's within the magneto. If you get different results, no change when you pull that switch in and out, try changing your switch first before you go directly to the magneto. Before I take my magneto off the tractor, there's one step I can do which will help me when I come back to reinstall the magneto. That is checking where the rotor is facing. I can trace my number one wire right here. Number one's always closest to the radiator. I trace it that it's right here on the cap. When I pull my cap off, I see that my rotor is facing pretty much up and down right now. I would rather have it be where the number one wire is. So we're gonna rotate the rotor here. My dad's using the hand crank on the front of the tractor and he's gonna snap it around here. That's good, right there. So you heard that snap. That's the impulse working in the magneto. That tells me that on this magneto, the impulse end is working as it, sh as it should. That's another good step you can do to help troubleshoot where the issue lies with your magneto. Also, my rotor is facing right here where my number one wire is. So when I go to reinstall this into the tractor, it'll start a lot easier for us. That step isn't crucial. If you skip it, life will go on. But if you can do it, it'll make your life a lot easier. So with that, now we're ready to take the magneto off of the tractor. There are just two bolts to remove the magneto, one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm taking the last of the four screws off of my cover here. We call this piece the cover and the cap is what we left on the tractor that has the four wires coming out of it. So with the cover coming off, we can see the coil inside. This is actually an aftermarket coil that has been previously replaced. Here I have an example of an original style coil. You can see that this one is physically damaged. Every once in a while I'll see them actually melted down. A coil is something that we commonly find wrong with a magneto, so make sure that you pay attention to your coil and determine if you want to replace it or not.
I'm going to set that aside. We'll come back to the coil and I'm going to move on to the rotor here. I want to point out to you that on my rotor, you can see the damage here. That is a sign that this rotor is bad and definitely needs to be replaced. I'm sure when we look in the cap that's on the tractor, we'll notice that there's damage as well inside the cap. I'm going to pull the rotor off and then you'll see some screws here. I'm going to remove this one, this one, and this one to pull off this piece. I'm leaving these two screws intact for right now. Once I pull these screws off, we will see the points inside there, and we're going to take a look at the condition of those. Okay. So inside there, I see my points. These points appear to be in okay shape, but we'll go ahead and replace them. It's a pretty affordable part, and it's very, very often the problem with the magneto. With that, I'm going to flip it over and come over here to the impulse side. So on the impulse side of the magneto, let me just set this gasket aside because I'm kind of getting caught up on it. On the impulse side here, you need to get your impulse off. So you do that with a crescent wrench here to hold it still, and then a socket here to loosen it up. And you kind of hold both of those at the same time. It's a little tricky with one hand, but with that, you can loosen it. And then once it's loose, you can pull it off the rest of the way. There is a spring underneath here. So if you suspect a problem with your impulse, you might want to wear safety glasses. There's my impulse spring inside of there. Now you can pull the impulse out. You will accomplish that by using two screwdrivers to get underneath the impulse like this. And then one on the other side and you pry up together with both of those screwdrivers at the same time. It'll loosen up the impulse and it will come out. This impulse looks like it's operating as it should. You can see that those springs work. I saved this impulse from the other day that I um, discovered because I wanted to show you an example of a really bad impulse. When I pulled this out of the magneto, it was upside down like this. And when I pulled it out, the dog stayed in there. It was off. And then you can see the pulse spring was loose. You can also see that there's significant damage on the dogs or the weights of the impulse. If you discover an impulse like this, when you take your magneto apart, you definitely need to replace it. You have two options for replacement. One is you can you know, purchase this whole assembly like this brand new and put it into your magneto. Or if you discover that your weights are okay and your plate seems to be okay, and you just have a problem with the spring, you can purchase just replacement pole nuts, which is a little bit cheaper. It'll save you some money if you want to reuse those parts. The pole nuts are a little bit tricky to get in. I'll show you how, but if you want something simple, just buy the whole impulse. But that's what you're inspecting and looking for with that piece right there. Let's go back to the magneto here, and you can see that there's a key in the armature shaft. Let me try to pull that out here. Let me try to turn this so you can see it. Hopefully my hands don't block the way here, but you can just tap that key loose just like that. Save the key. You're going to want to reuse that. And then your next step is to loosen up these four screws in here. Every once in a while, these will be extremely tight and I've had to use an impact driver to get these loose before. This one came out, hopefully the rest of these will as well. But if you have trouble with these screws, keep the impact driver in mind as an option for you for driving them out. With those four screws out, I can just pull this apart and inside, we'll see these bearings that are on the armature. I'm just going to pull this the rest of the way so you can see it. I might be hung up on my points on this end. There we go. Just like that. With this nut loosened up, I will be able to remove the points. I used an 11 30 seconds wrench on that. And with that, I can grab onto the points and it'll just pull up right out of the way. And then and sometimes that's a spade. This one looks like it's fully connected, so I'll remove that the rest of the way to free those up. There's one more screw on the bottom here for the second half of your points, which you can go ahead and pull that off as well. And then, with that screw out of there, that will be all disassembled on this end. Now let's move up here and talk about the coil. You can see that there's a screw on both sides here, and this has like a core inside the coil that holds it in there and try to get that loose. Sometimes these screws are really stuck tight. Thankfully, these ones came out probably because this coil has been replaced before. If you have an original coil, you're probably gonna have a hard time on those screws. Let me get the one off the other side here. Oops, just having trouble staying on it. There we go. 
You can see that there's an insulator on either side of the coil and that's a piece that we'll keep track of and reuse when we reassemble. You set that aside and with that, you can get this screwdriver underneath there and see if that helps pull it out. There we go. You can see that I'm still attached by this wire that's held onto the condenser there. So in order to get that out, I'm gonna use a socket here to pull this off, just like that. This is 7 16 socket that you're gonna need here. Let's see how we're doing. We're close, but not quite. There we go, okay. Pulled that off and the insulator's there as well. Let me set that aside and flip this over. There's two screws here for the door and then there's one screw here that holds this clip that kind of holds the condenser in. It's a little funny how that all fits in there together, but it's how it was designed, so we gotta follow that process here. Let me get that screw out and I'll show you the clip underneath there that I'm talking about in case you can't see it well. There's the clip and that holds the condenser in. So with that, I'm gonna take this door off next, like I talked about, just these two screws here. You can see my bottom screw looks like that's been damaged before. Let's see if it'll come off. Yes, we're good. Okay, with that, the door comes off and then the condenser will slide out that way, just like that. The condenser does go bad from time to time, so we'll put a new one in and then when I pulled that condenser out, it freed up the wire so then the coil can come out the rest of the way. When you rebuild your Magneto, you will need to order some parts. The following parts in front of me on the table here are all offered on my website. First, we have a tune-up kit, which consists of points, rotor, and condenser. Or if you need only one of those pieces, we offer them individually as well. This is a new impulse spring if you need to replace yours, and then this Paul spring goes on the impulse dogs if you need to replace your Paul spring. I definitely recommend it. It's a little spring, affordable part that you can replace. If you think that replacing the Paul spring is too hard for you, remember that we do offer the impulse all assembled if you need it. We also have bearings for the armature if you want to replace yours. Here, these two parts are easily confused. This one we call the cover, and this one we call the magneto distributor cap, where all your wires go. You need to replace these if you look at yours and you see that the electrode is burned up or damaged. Sometimes they're even broken off. Here we have a gasket set. So a gasket set includes these five gaskets, or if you want to, you can also purchase the mounting gasket as a separate purchase. So let's say this is the first time you've tried to rebuild a magneto and there's a chance you're going to need to take your magneto off the tractor and put it back on and try again just order yourself an extra mounting gasket so that you have that flexibility to take your magneto on and off that's what this as a separate purchase is designed for also we do offer new spark plug wires and spark plugs if you need to replace yours now is a great time to do so and you can add those to your cart along with your magneto parts all of these are available on my website, farmtractorrepair.com. I know that you can purchase magneto parts and parts for your farm oil tractors, lots of places. However, I ask that you give the business to my sale as it helps to encourage me and also to fund future tractor tutorials. This is the core that you need to take out of your old coil. And then when you have your new coil ready, when it comes in the shipping box, this ground tab is bent down. So you'll just bend it up and then your new core will be ready to go in. You can clean this up with a wire brush if you want to. You can spray a little bit of lube on it. Anything to help it slide through easily. You don't want to damage the coil or the core as they're both um, fragile pieces. The coil is a little bit on the expensive side as far as parts that you purchase for the magneto, so you want to be careful with it. And also the core, because you can't get a new one, you want to be careful with it as well. So just work carefully there. You can just slide it back in once you're ready. If you need to, you can tap on it with a hammer. To get my old core out, I have a driver that fits through there. If you don't have a driver, you could maybe try a socket that would fit the right size, but something to help you drive that all the way through so you can reuse it on your new coil. I'm choosing to put a new condenser into my magneto. You could choose to do the same. When you slide your condenser through, there are two wires that go onto the end of it. One is this wire from the coil, which we're just gonna slide through there. And the second is the wire that comes through the casing of the magneto 
and goes to the points. That slides on there as well. There you can see I have both of my wires attached and I'm gonna slide it up to where it needs to be and I'll put this through here and that piece has the threads on it that matches up to the threads on the end of the condenser. So you line those up and then you can just tighten it up. The next few steps are fairly straightforward and when I was doing them, my hands really covered up what I was doing. So I'm just gonna talk you through them. You need to put your coil in. Notice that there's insulators on both sides and those do need to go in. This tab side goes on this side where that door is. I guess you could say there's a door on this side too, but just know that that tab goes on this side, it's directional. And then be sure that you don't skip this little tab here. That tab grounds the condenser. I have seen where a magneto is missing that piece and it'll prevent the magneto from working properly. So make sure you get yours back in as it should. Once you do on this side of the case, you do have a new gasket for right here. So go ahead and put the new gasket in and then the cover back on top with those two screws. Our next step is the armature. This is magnetized and you can test the magnets just by hanging a screwdriver on there and you know that your magnet is good. If your magnet is weak, if it won't hold up a screwdriver, then you would want to get your magnets recharged. I will tell you though that that's not extremely common. Normally, if you have a problem with your magneto, that is not the first thing that I would think of by any means, but it's worth double checking when you have it all apart. The bearings inside here, I'm going to pack with grease. I've double checked to make sure that my race is in good condition inside. And then with that, I'm just gonna slide this right through here. It is magnetized, like I said, so you're kind of fighting it a little bit. This end goes on the points and then the threaded end comes out here on the impulse side of the armature. I'm packing this bearing in the same manner. And with that, I'm ready to slide this cover on. This cover is directional. This end with the slot, which is the timing adjustment, goes to the bottom and this solid end comes to the top. My felt packing is there. And then I'm going to reuse these big screws and put those in all four places. And then I have my little key ready to reuse too that I'll put right here into the shaft. As I said earlier, if you notice that your dogs are a little bit lazy, they just aren't snapping back as they should, you can put a new paw spring in. This is a new paw spring in my hand right there. I'm gonna show you how to put that in. It's a little bit tricky, but you can definitely do it. The first thing you need to do is take this clip off the top. I'm just using a pair of needle nose pliers to pull that out of the place. With that out of the way, your dog will just lift right off and you can see the old PAL screw is right there. I'm gonna pick that up with a pair of needle nose pliers and set it aside over there. Now I have my new Paul screw. See how the tab is shorter on this side and longer on this side? The short side goes down and rests right into that hole. Now this is the tricky part. You have to get this tab into the hole of your dog right there at the same time that you get this onto your shaft. So here we go. This might be a little bit tricky from this direction showing you. I'm gonna to try to do my best to show you how that's done. You can see the tab there. I'm just gonna to try to get on it with my weight and I am. Oh, but then my bottom spring hole came out. So let me try to push that back in. Oops, I'm off. Okay, I'll try again. I promise this is doable, I've done it. It's just a lot of concentration. These needle nose pliers, if you have a good pair, are really gonna be to your advantage when you're working this in there. Ooh, I think I'm close. I'm really close. Let me slide that down. And you can, I don't know if you can see in there, but what the, my problem is that I got my paw spring just a little bit bent. It's not coming straight down onto the dog. Ooh, now it's straight. You can see that I have it held down in there. The next step is just to get this clip over the top. And with that, it's assembled. And now you can see it kicks back as it should. I hope that demonstration was helpful to you. Just remember your short tab on the bottom, long tab on the top, and that both of them go through that hole, put that clip back in. And as long as it springs back like mine does, you are good to go. This is an example of a good intact impulse spring. Typically, if I see an impulse like this, I will reuse it. However, often an impulse spring will be broken. So if you discover that yours is damaged, you can definitely replace it. We sell a brand new impulse spring. So you can just pry this out of here. You gotta get underneath it with a screwdriver and 
pry it out of there. I'm going to try to drive this in and get behind it here with a hammer. There we go. I'm underneath it, and this is going to pop out. Whoops. <laughs> Just like that, okay? That's why I'm wearing safety glasses and being careful about it. With the old spring removed, you can see the new spring comes like this, and there's this little tab inside there. You start the spring on one end, and you push it in all the way around. There we go. So there we go. New impulse spring ready to go. That is hard, but if you need to get a new impulse spring, it's definitely possible to do. Now I'm ready to set my dogs and plate on. I have my key right here, so I'm going to line up the notch where the key goes, and then that will drop down all the way. I'm going to just make sure I'm down as far as I should be. Looks like it. Then with that, I'm ready to put my spring drive on, and that drops down as well. There's a little bit of a washer here. That notch lines up with the opening that you'll see inside there, and then this nut will go onto the top. I'm going to hold it with a crescent wrench and tighten it up just like the same process when I removed it. Once you have your impulse assembled, you can just grab onto it with that same crescent wrench and snap it back to make sure that your impulse is working as it should. So just hold it back like that. That's what you want to hear and see, and then you know that your impulse is good to go. Let's flip back over to the points side. I have my insulator bake light piece here that I'm going to put my new points onto. If you go to all this effort, definitely put new points on. You, they go bad all the time. My old points were so bad. So you just make sure that you put new ones in. They were, my old ones are really burnt up. You can see I have my points and then my wire onto here. And then I'm gonna start this nut on the end. This is a little tricky to hold on to all at once, but I'm just gonna get it started there. I can tighten it up the rest of the way once I get it into the case, but I wanna get a really good start on it since it's so tight once you set it in there. With that, you can see that there's a little notch on the bake light that matches the notch here in the magneto case. So I'm gonna set that on top, and then my points come around, and the center of the points here slides right onto that shaft. And it all sets down into place together at one time. So there you go. You can see I have this assembled and this is good here. I'm gonna come back and tighten that up, but first I wanna show you that this bottom piece will set in. You can see that the contact touches the contact here for the points. I'm gonna get this screw started. I'm not gonna tighten it up all the way because that screw is how we're going to adjust the points. I did put a little bit of grease on my shaft before I put the points on there, and you'll want to do that as well. Now we are ready to tighten up the gap here for the points. I like to set mine at about 15,000, so that's the feeler gauge that I have right here. You can see that my gap is extremely large, okay? I don't have the second tab of my points tightened down at all. So let me tighten this down just a little bit more so it can still move. And I want to move this up so that it's tight at the 15 thousandths, and then I'm going to tighten up my screw. Ooh, you can see the points move a little bit when you tighten the screw up, so this is why you gotta double check it. Let me tighten the screw. Okay, and then I'll set my feeler gauge in there. I'm a little tight, so I'm gonna back it out. It's important to do this adjustment when your magneto is at high lobe. High lobe is right here. You can see that I have the points touching right here onto high lobe. This would be low lobe. That's high, that's the difference there, okay? That's the point where you wanna make this adjustment. Now my gap is way too large. So let me get back on the head with my screwdriver, loosen, tighten with the points. There we go. And I'm gonna to touch my gap here. And I like how I am at the 15 thousandths. This little magneto gap is so important. Don't skip this step. And then you can double check and see that your points open and close when you go from high lobe to low lobe back and forth. That's how it should operate. Pay really careful attention to the information I'm about to share regarding the timing gears. This is really important. The timing gears are underneath this cover. You can see this is the old one where I just pulled that off and you'll see the two timing gears inside. This is the sandblasted one that I'm gonna use on the Magneto today. So here is my gear. Inside here, if you look closely, you'll see an R and an L. R is what we're looking for because that's a right-hand rotation. L would be for a left hand. 
so the R. And then on the smaller gear, you're looking for a bevel. If you rotate this around and you just look at the gears, you'll eventually notice that one of these gears is lower, it's beveled, than the rest of the gears. That bevel gear needs to line up with the R on the larger gear. So here's how that's gonna go. I'm gonna drop this in here. Ooh, I already lost track of where, here we go. My bevel gear is gonna face this direction right here, I can see it. And then I look here for my R and I trace my eye straight down and I line up the R with the bevel. So I gotta turn this just a little tiny bit and that did it. My R is lined up with my bevel. If your eyesight isn't good enough to see straight down, just use like a straight edge, whatever you have to line up and be like, okay, that's where that bevel needs to be and make sure that you get that exactly where it needs to be. If it's even just one tooth off, you're going to have some trouble with the way that your tractor runs. Once you're confident that you have your timing gears lined up correctly, just take a little bit of grease and pack it all throughout the compartment here. I probably should have put grease around my gears before I put them back in. So I'm gonna take them back out. I'll put grease around them, put them back in in order and pack grease all around there. Make sure you use the one gasket underneath here. Put your two screws back in. One gasket goes right here as well. I'm gonna set that in place. You notice that there is a flat spot on this shaft. The flat spot lines up in here. So take a look at where your flat spot is. Mine's right there. And then it should just drop on easily. Line up your gasket. And then put three screws with a little tiny washer behind it around the perimeter. I'm choosing to put a new cover on my magneto so that I have a really good electrode here. If you discover when you take your cover off that your electrode is damaged, then you'll want to do the same. There is a gasket that goes underneath this cover, which I did place inside of there. And then there's four screws with those washers, which you'll remove or reuse, I should say, and put those along the edge of your cover here. After that, you can then put a new rotor on. Remember my rotor was really burnt out, so I'm putting a new one of those on too. You can just trace it around until it drops into place. See, it will set there, but that's incorrect. You just gotta move it around until it drops in, and then your rotor will be set. On this side, you can pay attention to your tabs here. Go ahead and look at your tabs on the tractor back here. Mine are facing up and down, so I want to move my uh, mine up and down as well so that it will slide right in and make good connection. There's a gasket in your gasket kit, which goes on right here. Just make sure you pay attention to the hole in the slot on the bottom. So with that, I'm ready to put this onto my tractor. Back here, I did put a new cap on. You can see I just transferred over my wires. The Remember the um, electrode in here was burnt. Since my rotor was burnt, my cap was burnt as well. And so I wanted to put a brand new one on. I did that and you will probably want to do the same if you discover that your rotor was damaged. The cap will need to be replaced as well. So now with all that, I'm ready to put it onto my tractor. I have my two bolts in here and I have my ground wire hooked up. Now I'm ready to slide my cap into place. Remember, I'm paying attention to where that number one wire was because I want it to be in the same spot that it was before. And with that, you can just line up the cap to the magneto. The bottom one's hung up a little bit. Let me take this top one back off again and see if I can do the bottom one first, if that'll help. It's just harder to see <laughs> if that's lined up or not than the top. There we go. There's the bottom and there's the top. Next, I'll hook up my coil wire. If you want to put new spark plug wires on, you can. We offer those. You can order them with your kit. Now is a good time to do it if you need them. So with that, I am ready to start up this tractor and see how it runs. My dad's at the operating station. He's going to start it up. When he does, I'm going to move the magneto back and forth ever so slightly, like this much, to show you how you can adjust the timing with that adjustment on the magneto. So go ahead. Okay, so it starts up. I have, I, it started so quickly. That really is encouraging to me. I'm gonna set my tools down here. Now listen to the engine. See how it ran a little bit easier if I move it this way. Did you hear that labor? It's running a little bit harder moving back. So I wanna find that happy medium. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit more. And I'm just really listening to the way that the tractor runs. I wanna give it a little bit more of adjustment. There you go, did you hear that change? 
I hope you can. You'll be able to hear it better on your own tractor. I like how it sounds right now, so this is the spot where I'm gonna tighten up the magneto. You can go ahead and turn it off. I hope that this video is helpful to you and that when you put your magneto on your tractor, it starts up and fires up just like mine did. That'd be so encouraging if that happens on your magneto as well. When you are ready to do this repair, please purchase the parts on my website. We will be happy to send those to you so that you can get your magneto back up and running. You can subscribe to my channel so that you get a notification every time a new video is released. We'll see you next time.